Yo guys, this is Jack C99 and today we're back for our brand new video and welcome back to the YouTube channel guys. Before this video starts, make sure to... Yeah, so it has ended at Ibrox once again guys. Rangers 3. Hibs 1. Now there's a lot to talk about as in the Triantes free kick that took out two of his own teammates. I seen the video and I looked at it and I was like, what is that? Now, there is that to talk about. There's also Rangers getting a penalty that wasn't a penalty and then it ended up getting chopped off because Wright was in the box as Tavernier shite the penalty kick. So, yes, there's a lot to talk about. Right, okay, so starting on, well, let's just face it, um, how the game started. Yes, it was pretty much end to end and pretty much both teams were at it. But Hibbs' defence was poor. I will hand my hands up at that. The defence was poor. It was actually not 100% though. Rangers had the open goal from James Tavenier who got his 130th goal which is the only defender in the UK with the highest amount of goals. So, uh, yes, congratulations to him on that. Um, even though he's a Rangers player, but I don't care about that. Uh, it's always good to congratulate a player on their achievement. Let's just be reasonable here, guys, right? The Rangers penalty. Um, now, I was confused was watching the game and I was like, what just happened? Now, don't get me wrong. What just happened? Yeah, right, Tavenier happily steps up. Happily steps up, like he always does to take a penalty. Does the deep breath. <sighs> Concentration is key. You do know that on a penalty, I can totally understand that. I remember that when I used to take penalties a lot, I used to do the exact same as Tavenier. It's called focus, and it's called your next move before you take the penalty. So that's totally understandable. Kind of the same as me when I used to take a penalty, like I've just explained. And uh, Tavenier takes it, David Marshall saves, and then right as Tavenier's foot is about to kick the ball in the back of the net in the top-hand corner, which is where he usually always goes with a penalty, or top left, usually, I think, and David Marshall saved. But right, the Rangers player... His foot was in the box as Tavenier shiked it, which I didn't really notice. I wasn't paying attention to that because I was focused on the goal and sort of focused on Tavenier taking the penalty, hoping to see Marshall actually save, which he doesn't usually save any Tavenier's penalties. David Marshall saves it, and then Wright, who's already in the box as Tavenier shikes it, then scores Rangers fans, as always, to celebrate. You're allowed to do that when your team scores. And then the commentator, I don't know his name at Ibrox, but shouts to say, commentate and say, VAR checking possible, I think it was foul or, I can't remember what it was that he said because I couldn't make it out because I was just watching the game. I wasn't really listening to that part. And then VAR was checking it and then that's when VAR showed that Wright's foot was over the line in the big massive box as... Tavernier, who is a good penalty taker for Rangers. I w yes, I'm a Hibs fan, but I'm just saying Tavernier's a good penalty taker. Yes, he'd done the same at Easter Road. He missed and then his teammate scored. But, uh, and then the game of the day was the second time that Tavernier had missed a penalty. But that's not the point. Then VAR comes in with it saying that Wright's foot was in the box. Then the goal was chopped off and I'm just itching my head like, what the hell's going on here? Like, But then eventually when I seen it, I was like, oh, right. So that's why it's been chopped off. Right. When VAR shows you the picture. And then not long after that, yes, Tavenier scores. Eventually gets his instinct back on scoring. And it was a good goal, don't get me wrong. It was a very powerful strike. Fair play to the lad. So yes, and then not long after that, Hibs go up the other end of the park. 
And it's Mizzy Mylida who scores for Hibernian SC to make it 1-1. One, one. Um, was a good goal. Managed to work it around Butland and then score. So yeah, that's what Mylida is good at. Or as in Mizzy Mylida, whatever, however you say his name. A good player. I'm hoping that we can hang on to him and Marcondes. Would be great. It would be good to have both of them still in a Hibs t-shirt on a permanent deal. It would be great. Will Fish as well. But, now I want to really chat about this seven minutes that came out of nowhere. Added on in the first half. Don't get me wrong. The Rangers goal was scored, but it was seven minutes was up. Seven minutes added time was up. Now, surely the rule is, once seven minutes has been played, <laughs> half time. No, 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 no. We're in Glasgow territory. Let's just... Now, fair play. Huge respect for who Hibs play every game of the season. It's not the team we're playing. It's the referees. Now, I've seen it. Not just in Hibs v Rangers games, I've seen it in Rangers v Celtic, Rangers v Hearts. I've seen every team in the league get the same punishment. Like the time where, yes, where it was Old Firm Derby, the same happened to Rangers when they were getting beat in Old Firm Derby. Which I was a bit, I felt a bit bad because I was like, right, seven minutes have been played. No, the referee adds on another four minutes. Boom. Then he blows the whistle. Now... That's all. Surely the SFA must be noticing this and saying, right, why is the referee still playing when the seven minutes have been done? I just, I, I don't get, like, mind-blowing. Where the hell are these minutes coming from? Because the VAR check on the Rangers offside chopped off goal that didn't count, that only took two minutes. No seven minutes. So, tell my viewers, pardon me, whether you're Hibs, Celtic, Rangers, Motherwell, I just don't know why refs can't just blow the whistle and say, right, that's seven minutes. Watch up. the clock on Sky Sports. It was into the seventh minute and it went to 59 and then it went eight minutes, then it went nine and then at the end of the ninth minute, they were like, I, me and my friend were like, that's ten minutes on the nose that the refs blowed the whistle for. Well into the fifties in minutes, and I'm like, right, so that's technically a first half that's been played of 55 minutes. Don't get me wrong, right? The rule on my channel is, is I don't sleep other Scottish football teams like Hearts, Celtic, Rangers. I just keep it calm, I keep it family friendly and I don't slag any teams off because I'm not that kind of a football fan. Yes, I have autism and I just talk my thoughts on the game and I just keep it family friendly. No slating teams because that is the rule on this YouTube channel and it's part of the Brother Trio rules. Scottish football is corrupt. Now... All the Scottish football teams in the league premiership have had enough of VAR. I'm sure that's true by now because at this point, VARs went against Hibs, Rangers, Celtic, basically everybody. VAR went against Rangers um, in the Old Firm Derby back in December at the park. So... I do remember that. Then Rangers wrote to the SFA. I've seen that, seen the process. And then I'm like, right. Because I watched the Old Firm Derby and I'm like, I can see why Rangers didn't give, or why Rangers wanted to hear the audio of um, what was happening when Celtic got, I think it was that penalty or something, I can't remember. It was Rangers, they scored... And then their goal got ruled offside, but then nobody knew why. VAR never gave a definition or anything. Basically, VAR helping Celtic out. 
a bit to keep their title hopes alive back then when they were actually, like, allegedly amazing. I just wanted to add that in to my Hibs v Rangers match reaction as well because VAR is going against, I'd say, more like Hibs Rangers quite a bit lately. And it's getting to the stage where, why? That's out of the equation that the old firm have had the most penalties. That doesn't matter. What happens is, is when the people that are doing VAR don't give you the audio, why? Because there was an issue at a Hibs v... I can't remember who Hibs were playing. And then Hibs... It was Aberdeen at Pitodre. Aberdeen got the penalty that wasn't a penalty because the player's hands were at his sides and that was a penalty of her. So then Hibs wrote to the SFA and then the same situation happened with Rangers a few times. So it was like... VAR needs to either change as of next season. You're probably better with goal line technology. VAR is just going against us. To be honest, right? The VAR that gets used in the Premier League, I'd rather use because then the people that use that VAR, they know what they're doing. English referees wouldn't even stand for those rules or make those mistakes like Scottish referees. I think that now the referees that I think are just well past it now, John Beaton, Clancy, Willie Collum, um, who else is there? The referee that done the... That's it. The referee that done the Hibs v Rangers quarterfinal. He is an absolute shambles of a referee. Sorry. But he was the one that refereed the old firm derby at Celtic Park back in December. And it was him that was at fault on VAR as well. So, it's getting to the stage... Where I think referees are just dishing out red cards to anybody. And um, yeah, the referees that I've just said need to get cleared out until you go elsewhere. And just bring in more fresher referees, fresh faces and just start again. Yeah guys, the only thing I have left to say is um, the Hibs defence needs to actually improve widely. And most important because... The defence was a shambles today for Hibs, and look, it was a shambles of a day for Hibs, I'm not going to lie, uh, because the defence was terrible today, kind of switched off far too much today, even although David Marshall pulled off some good saves. I know that David Marshall's contract is up as of May this year, so I don't know if he's announcing retirement or what his plans are for the rest of his career, I don't know. Uh, and you've also got Paul Hanlon and Lewis Stevenson, their contracts are up as of May this year as well. So technically you're looking at that. There's three players that are that have only got the whole April pretty much left. As in left to play. And um, for Hibs, basically. So, as in the longest serving players. So, I don't know if will we hear their retirements as well. Probably most sincerely will. Who have been good servants for the club. And I think probably this is the season where it will be like the manager is going to decide to have the Hibs squad a total different mentality as of next season don't know who he's going to bring in but I know there's going to be a major rebuild on the cards and we'll see what happens for there but I'm going to leave the video there guys and leave it at that always guys just before I continue huge shout outs to the most important people that help support my youtube channel huge shout outs to Long Bangers and Matty the crew everyone uh, Hip Supporters Group and Bella Really good people on these pages, and I appreciate every Hibs fan across the way. Yeah, thank you for tuning into the YouTube channel. I really appreciate it, and I hope 
you stay for the journey as it continues. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. You've been watching Jack C99. Make sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications so that you don't miss out. And uh, that has been me, Jack C99. And bye bye. <laughs>